What's going on guys? Back with some more Guardians of Middle Earth today. This time I'm playing Bilbo Baggins. The Bagginses. And uh, Bilbo's my favorite striker. I think I mentioned that in the previous video. And what really makes Bilbo cool is he's basically a rogue. The only character in this game that I really think is very roguelike. And the reason I think this is he's got a stealth ability. His X ability puts him into stealth for a limited amount of time. And it really gives you a chance to surprise your opponents, and it's it's really really good. And you'll see me use, you'll see me make good use of it in this game, as well as uh, the A button, which basically taunts an enemy, and you can actually use it over and over, but you just can't use it on the same target more than once, for, for like a limited amount of time. It basically puts like a debuff on them, and until that debuff wears off, you can't taunt them again. But uh, it's pretty cool, it's a short taunt, um, so basically you come out of stealth, you hit them a couple times, and if they try to run away you can taunt them back, it gives you uh, another hit or two, and it's really useful. His uh, B is basically a steroid, makes you attack faster and gives you critical chance. And it's, it's really good, it actually gives you a lot of critical chance. As you can see I'm going to pick up first blood right here really good start for me. I pick up level 2, I stealth here, he has no idea that I'm coming. I'm gonna hit him once, taunt him, and finish him off. Two kills, not even like a minute and a half into the game. Really really good start for me this game. Um, oh yeah, as you can see, I didn't mention this in uh, the previous video, but if you look in the lower left, not only is my belt down there with my relics, but you can also see uh, my potions. And as you can see, I have experience potions, the purple ones that say XP+. Plus. Those are experience potions. Uh, those are on the D-pad. Uh, they correspond to each button on the D-pad. And then the one on the bottom is a shield. And that basically gives me a shield. And it shields the more the higher level I am. So, you know, if I get in trouble, if I get in a bad situation, I can pop that shield potion. And sometimes that will give you the edge you need to come out on top and win a battle. Uh, the experience potions are pretty cool. Uh, these particular ones are the really, really cheap ones. And they're the only ones that I really like to spam because otherwise it gets really expensive and you just waste all of your gold. Uh, basically, they give you 18% experience uh, for, I believe it's 80 seconds, something like that. So they're pretty good. Uh, if you use four of them, like I'm using three, but if you use four of them, that basically equals five minutes of 18% more experience. And sometimes that can really give you an edge because levels are like basically the biggest thing in this game. I mean, yeah, your relics are important, your gems are important, but levels are just overall the best thing you can possibly have. So getting as much experience as you can is just really important in this game. As you can see, the, he teleports right when I'm about to taunt him that time, so he he escapes. Lucky for him. If I would have used the taunt a little bit earlier, I probably could have pulled off the kill. I probably wasn't thinking about the fact that he could just teleport out. As you can see, again, I'm playing with JTS. Uh, me and JTS have played quite a bit of Guardians. He loves Haldir. Haldir is probably his main character. Uh, my main characters would probably be Bilbo and uh, Mozgog. And I, I want to put up a video with Mozgog eventually because I'm probably the best with him. Like I hardly ever lose when I play him because he's really, really overpowered. Uh, but I really, I really like Bilbo as well, and um, he's my favorite striker. And this game was pretty good and relatively lag-free. There was no NPCs on the other team, so I thought it was a good game to put up. Hope you guys enjoy it. As you can see, I pick up my third kill here, reach level 5, get my ult really quick, and I'm going to KS them right here, <laughs> which, uh, don't do that. Uh, pe people definitely don't like it when you do that, um, but yeah. I don't really care. I mean, there are a couple randoms. Um, I'm trying to just, you know, I'm middle lane, so I just want to snowball snowball my level advantage and uh, carry this game as best I can as the middle. Um... You know, I mean, if those are my friends, I'm sure they wouldn't care that much anyway, because like I said, I'm the middle, I'm the striker, I'm doing the majority of the damage in team fights. As long as I'm alive, I'm doing the most damage on the team, most likely. Me and JT, because JT is also a striker. So as you can see, I'm level 6, got a massive level advantage over their team. The only person close to me is JTS, he's level 5, and he's on my team, obviously. I'm going to pick up a kill here on Lug Bowl, hit him once, taunt him, hit him again, pick up the kill. This guy thinks he's got me, but I'm going to turn right back around here. I'm going to hit him, taunt him, ult him, and that was really dumb because I didn't realize my ult would hit the, the, the creatures up there, but apparently it does. 
This guy has a feeling I'm going to get the taunt off. He comes back, and I don't know what he was trying to do. Maybe he's just dumb. Maybe he didn't know I was going to taunt him, and he's just, I don't know. Anyway, I taunt this guy here. JTS teleports behind him to get the stun off. But, unfortunately, Agandar teleports out, and he will live this time. I pick up level 7. I'm going to pick up level 2 of my ult. This guy's going to get slaughtered. JT's going to steal my kill. <laughs> no, um, I probably wouldn't have gotten the kill anyway, so it was good that JT got the last hit there. I taunt this guy. JT ults him. He gets slaughtered by Agandar and me, hitting him both at the same time when he has hardly any health. I'm going to kill this Wraith here. These Wraiths give you 500 experience, so they're pretty damn good. As you can see, I haven't used any of my experience potions because I really don't feel it's necessary. Like, if, if I'm this far ahead already, I really won't use experience potions. Uh, but if I'm, you know, if I'm behind or things are really close, that's when you want to no pop those experience potions and try to get any edge you possibly Wait, can. But uh, if you're this far ahead like I am, you really don't need it. It's kind of a waste. Um, as you see, two members of their team are now level 6, but it doesn't matter. I'm level 7. I'm about to get level 8, so I've definitely got a really nice lead here, and I'm going to push this tower right now. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. Yes, I am. Yeah, I, I can't make up my mind apparently right now. Um, but as you can see, um, I'm hitting the tower pretty hard. Uh, also, notice up in the upper left where it says 34 plus structure damage. Uh, that plus, that bonus damage to structures is actually from the kill streak that I currently have. Uh, as you can see right here, we, me and Legolas both stealth, but fortunately my ultimate uh, is up, and my ultimate's really cool, it's called Sting, and basically what it does is it hits every opponent that's near me, and it'll bounce around and hit all of them. Everyone needs and it's really cool, and uh, my A attack, if my A attack uh, hits them and they have a debuff, my ultimate actually hits them with more damage. So it's pretty cool, I mean you can throw out your taunt, taunt everyone on their team real quick and then throw out your ultimate, it'll do more damage. And you can pick up a few kills with it if you're good. So as you can see right here, I'm just like three shotting everything. I'm <laughs> just doing massive amounts of damage. My kill streak's going up, I now have 44 plus structure damage. Having a really good game here. Um, I'm really aggressive when I play MOBAs. Uh, probably a little bit too aggressive and which is why I don't really have like I usually don't have like you know like 20 to 0 30 to 0 I mean sometimes I do but I play really really aggressive and it's actually really good to play aggressive and um, I don't know it really puts the pressure on your enemies so just because you know I die a couple times it doesn't it doesn't really mean anything um, I'm just I'm trying to get the most kills that I can, put on the most pressure as I can, and just basically push the limits, see how what I can do with my character, and and it's really fun. I really like doing that. As you can see, that guy's really really low, and I'm gonna taunt him, pick up the kill here, back up, back up because the tower is hitting me pretty hard. As you can see, my structure damage is going up and up with that kill streak bonus. <laughs> I'm not sure how much it goes up for each kill on your streak, but um, right now it's uh, at 9 and it's at 49, so 9 times... Did times 9? No. I don't know. I'm too tired right now. <laughs> it's like 11 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to back off here because there's two of them and I only have like 3 bars of health. Uh, oh yeah, those green things of health, the little uh, health flowers, those pop up after a certain amount of time. I'm not sure how long it is. It's, I think it's like maybe five minutes, something like that. Um, but most of the stuff like that, like the, the boss monster on the bottom and the top, I think those are on a timer. The health, the little health things are on a timer. And um, yeah, everything's pretty much timed like that. I'm not sure if I die right here. I know I know my first death is coming up pretty soon. As you can see, Agendauer has just uh, the craziest ultimate ever. He basically shoots out three shockwaves of lightning. Each shockwave hits harder and harder as they go up. Okay, so I have two bars of health here, and watch what I do here. This is what I mean when I say I'm really aggressive. And if it was just Agendauer, the lightning guy that teleported away, I might have been able to get the kill. I didn't see Legolas. And Legolas picks up a really easy kill on me. So that was a mistake. Like I said, I'm very overly aggressive. Um, and I knew I knew that that was risky when I did that, but I just really don't care. I'm just really over-aggressive when it comes to MOBAs. So when you're watching me play, you'll see me play really aggressive, which in my opinion is pretty entertaining. Um, but it's not entertaining when you're dead.
I realize this. <laughs> JT's bitching about one of our teammates taking his kills. So as you can see, it's 560 to 171. I'm 12 to 1. I lost my structure bonus after dying. As you can see, it's not up there in the upper left anymore. So, I mean, you should try to keep that kill streak just for the structure damage. It really helps out. You take down those towers and those uh, those monsters, or the soldier spawners faster and everything like that. It's really good to try to keep your bonus. Um, as you can see, uh, if you look down at my relics, one of them says damage percent 15. I'm actually using, um, I think it's called Strength of Men. And uh, since it's the, since it's a... Uh, my second two slot relic it's actually activated at level 8 so once I hit level 8 basically if I get a kill before I die then my damage bonus is plus 15 but if I don't get a kill if I die before getting a kill then it's only 5% so it's risk versus reward but I find with Bilbo I'm usually able to play defensive enough to get a kill once I hit level 8 and not die so I mean like I said it's risky but it's a really really good relic if you can pull it off I'm gonna die again right here because that was kind of dumb. But okay, Agandar picks up a kill there, so not too bad. That was definitely way too overly aggressive. <laughs> like I said, I do that sometimes. Um, this game is pretty much winding down now. There's only a few minutes left until we're gonna win this. As you can see, my team has a massive level advantage, and basically in games like this, when the other team gets a massive level advantage, you're pretty much screwed. Um, comebacks are possible, especially if you're playing Elite Battlegrounds, which is unlimited time, but when you're playing uh, regular Battlegrounds like we are right now, you're basically on a timer, and even if, like, even if they don't kill your base all the way, you're still screwed if you're this far behind in points basically like I really doubt in 8 minutes they can make up a 700 point de deficit I mean theoretically it's probably possible but it's very very unlikely well, as you can see right now I'm 16 to 2 I have all three of my two slot relics activated I hit one melee attack hit him with my ultimate get another kill there what an ass as you can He's see, the, we're just about to clean this game up. Both of the inner towers are gone. I definitely encourage down. people, uh, if you end up picking up the game and liking the game, to pick up. Um, if if not, if you don't get the season pass, at least pick up Bilbo because Bilbo is freaking amazing. Bilbo and Thorin are definitely must-haves for the DLC for Guardians. Definitely recommend both of those characters. They're definitely really good. Um, Bert's also really good, but he's not really my type of play style. Like I, I just, start, I there's certain that characters that I love, and certain characters they're just really not my thing. But I can still tell you like that they're good. Like Bert is definitely a good character. Um, the Great Goblin, which is the fourth DLC character that's out so far, he's pretty good. But again, I just I really don't like him. So I would definitely recommend Bilbo. I would definitely recommend Thorin. Um, Thorin's pretty straightforward to play and like really tanky and just does a lot of damage so if you're looking for a good starting off character Thorin's definitely something you could pick up uh, they're basically only 160 Microsoft points if you don't get the season pass you can pick up Bilbo or Thorin for 160 Microsoft points each I believe there's uh, two more Guardians coming out probably on Tuesday because that's usually when the new content for Xbox Live comes up uh, according to Urine8, and he's really good at researching this type of thing, so I'm going to trust him on this. So most likely Tuesday there's going to be two more Guardians. Uh, I will definitely play them, and I'll probably put up a video playing as uh, one of the two new Guardians, as long as I like them and end up having you know a good game with them. Hope you guys enjoyed this game with Bilbo Baggins. Be sure to try them out. I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys continue to like my Guardians of Middle Earth videos. Peace. That game is n that game is not fun with randoms. Fuck. Well, Fuck I'm you. pretty sure you had fun that game.